I'm sorry guys, but I really miss Sarah. Fuck the ending in 13 too. And that's a really sexy walk. She's underrated. Oh well. Anyway guys, what's up YouTube? We are back with another Final Fantasy Top 10 Countdown. But this one's a little different. We all know who the hardest Final Fantasy bosses are. A very important element in Final Fantasy is item collecting. Some people are completionists and they want to get every item in the game. However, there are a few things in this series that are quite frustrating to get your hands on. So allow me to share with you the ones I find the most frustrating. Note that these are useful items. There's quite a lot of stuff in this series that's pretty hard to get, but by the time you get it, it's in some form or another completely useless. The Wormhill Blade is a perfect example. Anyway, let's get started. These are, in my opinion, the top 10 most difficult, frustrating items in Final Fantasy that make you say, fuck this shit. In all honesty, the only reason why Bliss Ball is in this video is because if I leave it out, half of you are going to kick my ass. Apparently, nobody likes Bliss Ball, but to be honest, I love Bliss Ball. It's pretty fun. After playing the first unfair game against Luka Goers, most of you said, Fuck Bliss Ball, I'm never playing it again. But unfortunately, without it, you cannot bring Walker to his full power. For starters, you can't even get his weapon until you start winning a few games. It'll probably take you maybe a full dedicated day, maybe a week depending on your life, to bring Walker's weapon to full power. Bliss Ball is not as hard as people think it is. You just need to hire the right people. There are three free agents in this game that will make this really easy. Lena, Shami, and Velucha. That's it! With these three girls, you can see me kick ass in Bliss Ball. You don't even need to go to with these three chicks. It's going to seem very hard and difficult at first, but once your characters start leveling up and learning different techniques, you'll be surprised how easy this ball can be. In order to show you this one, I'm going to have to dig up one of my old guys because unfortunately my PSP is broken. The Gadget Shield in Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core is an item that pissed off a lot of people because it's so damn annoying to get. For starters, the only way to get this thing is from the Magic Pot. There's quite a lot of preparing to do before you even try to get your hands on this thing. Once all the preparations are made, you have to go to a certain stage, which is one of the hardest stages in the game, unfortunately. The first three commands are very, very easy. It's the last one that you need to worry about. I take a slash. It's all about luck. Now, thanks to Sissonate, this can be manipulated just a little bit. But it's still going to annoy the hell out of you. now don't act surprised everybody knew that this would be on this list somewhere you need to dodge 200 lightning bolts in a row without getting hit by a single one fortunately there's a slightly easy way to do it but you still have to be completely focused and it's very easy to mess this up many people simply prefer to just customize a weapon for Lulum because this just is aggravating
unfortunately guys, I don't have this one on film because I don't think I'll ever get this shit. You have to oversold damn near every fiend in the game. Including the ones in the Via Fino. So, yeah, I think I'll pass on this one. There's another way to do break hit point limit and break damage limit. Not only that, but you really don't need it that much, especially when you have things like catnip. Some of you may find this one rather easy to get, but for me, it was pretty fucking annoying. Now, normally something like this wouldn't have any practical use, but the thing about 13.2 is that it has a lot of replay value with all the different monsters and different combinations that you can do. The main reason for getting this thing is so that you can quickly farm those power crystals and potent crystals and mana crystals and so on and so forth in the Archelite step. Some people want to raise all the best monsters. In your case, you're going to need a lot of these things. In order to get this thing, you need to collect every fragment in the game. Most of the fragments are pretty easy to get, but there are a few of them that are just aggravating. Annoying quiz. You got to walk around trying to find that 1% spot that you missed. You gotta find every monster in the game. And you gotta sit there and watch this goddamn slot machine for who knows how long. And out of all the fragments in the game, this is hands down the worst one. Don't even try to defend this shit. Before we get to number 5, let's take a brief intermission and review on just why Ozma is the hardest boss in Final Fantasy. Think about all of the super bosses you've faced in this series. Just think for a minute. You get into those fights and you just know you're going to win. You got all the best items, all the best equipment, all the best abilities, you have maximum hit points, maximum level, you just know that you're going to kick this boss's ass. This boss has absolutely no chance in hell of beating you. There are only two bosses that break this rule. Chak and Ozma. Unfortunately, in Final Fantasy IX, there is no combination known as Catnip Gunner Mode. The thing that separates Ozma from any other boss in Final Fantasy is the fact that the fight is completely luck based. You don't know if you're going to win or not. You have to end this fight praying for a victory. It does not matter how strong you are, what level you are, what gear you use, this guy can completely wipe you out in a few turns before you get a chance to do anything.
If this thing decides to spare Meteor and Kiraja, you have absolutely no chance in hell of winning this fight unless the RNG is nice to you and Meteor does 100 damage. Ozma can indeed be soloed by any character in this game, but that does not prevent him from being the hardest monster in the series. Some of you will beat this guy within a few minutes on your first few tries, some of you will beat this guy within 30 turns after 50 tries, and some of you will absolutely never beat this guy. Now that we got this out of the way, let's move on. Number 5 is the Excalibur 2 from Final Fantasy 9. There's a really good reason why I decided to put this one as number 5, which is directly in the middle. Because I've never tried to get it before. I've only played Final Fantasy 9 one time, but I already know that this needs to be on this list somewhere. Apparently, from what I've been told, you have to reach the last level within 12 hours to get your hands on this thing. And naturally, that shit's going to be very hard to do with all the random encounters. The Excalibur 2 is the strongest weapon in the game, and you can still fight bosses after getting it. But apparently, Steiner can do 9,000 damage just fine without it. Not only that, but you probably have to skip half the things in the game to get it. Finally, apparently, in order to get this thing, a really important element is getting the Maze Master at the beginning of the game. Which unfortunately means a rare steal from a boss. Fuck that shit. Fuck that. There isn't too much I can say about this because I've never tried to get it before, so I just put it as number 5. I'll let you guys tell me where this thing should be on this list. It's all about luck, people! Final Fantasy 4 DS has a lot, and I mean a lot, of rare items. But in most cases, there are only two of them that you really care about. The Adamant Armor, naturally, and the Onion Sword. Believe it or not, the Onion Sword is actually a lot harder to get than the Adamant Armor, because you only fight one red dragon at a time. Fortunately, you can call this thing anytime you want to with the Siren. The monsters in the DS version have been completely souped up. As far as number monsters go, the red dragon is the toughest of the bunch. I don't think there's a way to manipulate the RNG in this thing, unfortunately. So, this is going to take a lot of patience and luck. It may take it anywhere from a day to a week to get this thing. It took me a long time to collect all this shit. Mini games are a very important part of Final Fantasy. Unfortunately, some of them are very, very annoying. 
the one I hate the most is Triple Triad. It's not too bad at first, and it's actually kind of fun. But, later on in the game, once you get those crazy rules like random, same wall, and all that other crap, this game fucking sucks. Which is very unfortunate because there are a few cards that can only be won by playing this game. The queen of card side quests it's hands down the most aggravating side quest I have ever done in any Final Fantasy game I played. This side quest will have you resetting the game over and over and over and over again. You have to chase the bitch all over the world, purposely lose to her, then find out where she is again, and get your card back. You can refine these cards into some really good items. But unfortunately, acquiring them is going to be a pain in the ass. Take my advice. Stay the fuck away from this side quest. Okay gamers, we are down to the final two items. You have been warned. These items will test your patience. In order to obtain these shits, you need to have absolutely no life outside of your video games. So here we go. Final Fantasy XII is tied with 10 as my favorite Final Fantasy game of all time. Unfortunately, there is one thing that I have to complain about. Getting rare items in this game is a bitch. Half of the items in this game belong on this list by themselves. Unfortunately, it would have been extremely unfair to have one movie featuring nothing but Final Fantasy XII. So therefore, we're just going to say... All rare items in Final Fantasy 12 is number two. I'm telling you right now, if you haven't played this game before, you have been warned. Collecting rare items in Final Fantasy 12 is a major pain in the ass. It's even worse in the international version. Fortunately, there's a way to manipulate this chess, and after enough practice, it's kind of easy to get. So. Number two is all of the rare items in Final Fantasy XII. However, there's one that really needs to be discussed. I don't know who the fuck came up with this idea to do all this shit to get this weapon, but you need to be fired. You gotta take rare items, combine them with other rare items to make one rare item, then you need to make that rare item three times, then you gotta do that two more times for three other rare items. Then you gotta combine those three rare items to make one sword. Then you gotta cover 600,000 gil. For most of you, when you first saw what you had to do to get this thing, you said, fuck it, I'll settle for an ultimate blade. I almost did the same thing, but I said, no, I want that sword. The next time you decide to make a weapon this damn difficult to get, it had better be a pretty good one. Alright guys, the time has finally arrived. So, what can possibly be worse than the rare items in Final Fantasy XII? Believe it or not guys, there is one item that puts every rare item combined in Final Fantasy to shame. You need to be prepared to wait for a very, very long time unless you are extremely, extremely lucky. So here it is, the rarest, most despicable, annoying, frustrating, aggravating item in Final Fantasy that makes you say, FUCK THIS SHIT! <laughs>
Final Fantasy IV DS, the original Final Fantasy IV has a lot of rare items. But the only one you care about is the adamant armor. Unfortunately, in order to get this thing, you have to trade a little item called the pink tail. Where do you get the pink tail? You get it from these little bastards known as the Flan Princesses. Pink pus for those who play the Super Nintendo version. Most of you are playing this on the PSP. But unfortunately, the drop rate is still the same. Monsters in Final Fantasy IV have a 5% chance to drop an item. And then it's a 1 out of 64 chance for that item to be the rare item. I have played multiple ports of the original Final Fantasy IV game for over a decade. I have only gotten the pink tail five times. What the fuck were they thinking when they made this drop ratio? You can sit here for hours, days, weeks, months, and years and never ever ever see a pink tail. This is just simply fucking ridiculous. Some of you are extremely lucky. And you may have one, maybe even five of these in your inventory. Unfortunately, there are many of you who have played this game since it came out on Super Nintendo and you have never ever seen a pink tail in your entire life. There's a reason why this shit is extremely difficult to get because once you have the adamant armor in your possession, you are God. You cannot die with the adamant armor. If you die with the adamant armor, you suck at this game. That's all there is to it. If you thought this shit was hard to get in the DS version, don't even think about trying to get it in the original version. 